closed captioning brought to you by the Notary's Public of BC. Joining us now from the University of British Columbia's Department of Urological Sciences is Dr. Martin Gleave. Hi there, Dr. Gleave. Oh, great to be here, Michelle. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Our person of the week, Ken McCrindle, is uh, dealing with prostate cancer right now. How common is prostate cancer amongst men north of 49? Well, prostate cancer is the most common cancer that affects the aging male, uh, especially in the Western world. Uh, where about one in six men uh, uh, from the age of 50 on are at risk of developing it and um, about one in 20 of dying of it. One in six, uh, that's, a, that's a pretty high number. So that's one in 10 who get diagnosed with it. If we were to look at most 80 year old men, once they died of other causes and looked in their prostate, more than 80% of those men would actually have small amounts of prostate cancer. Doesn't mean that they died of it, but they developed it throughout their lifespan. Prostate cancer is the most common cancer that affects men. It increases most dramatically with age compared to any other cancer that afflic afflicts humankind. And so it is truly a disease of aging and isn't a threat to societies where longevity is prevalent. But there are things that men can do to delay the onset of prostate cancer, are there not? An important risk factor in prostate cancer is diet. So the Western diet, which is one rich in uh, animal fats, especially red meat fats, uh, causes something called oxidative stress after it's metabolized. And over many, many years, that oxidative stress is particularly felt in the prostate gland and that causes the DNA damage that's associated with cancer over time. There are many things that I think we can do in our diet and lifestyle to titrate down the risk of developing prostate cancer, but it's a lifestyle commitment that should go on for decades. That includes exercising regularly, maintaining ideal body weight for various reasons, muscle mass is important. There must be certain things that um, a, a man in their 50s, I would imagine that they need to start watching a little bit more vigilantly for certain signs of, of the development of prostate cancer. Again, in general, the warning signs are usually indicative of an advanced cancer that likely isn't curable. But many men as they age develop what are called lower urinary tract symptoms, urinary frequency, a slow and weak stream, having to get up through the night. That's due to an enlarged prostate, but not necessarily due to cancer. But if you are developing those urinary symptoms as you age, it should trigger a visit and at least a check on your PSA to make sure that those symptoms are not due to prostate cancer. If you are diagnosed, what are your treatment options? It's important to recognize that not all prostate cancers need treatment. Many of them we just watch and most of those do not progress over a 10-year period of time. But if you have higher grade cancers or an elevated serum PSA, then those cancers represent a threat for rapid growth and spread, and those are best treated with either surgical removal of the prostate or a type of radiation therapy uh, like brachytherapy or external beam radiation therapy. Given that prostate cancer can advance, uh, there's more hope, I think, than there used to be, partially because of you. You've been instrumental in developing a drug called OGX011. Can you speak to that and how it works, how, how it's been helping prostate cancer patients? So in our case with OGX011, that's a drug that blocks a stress-induced gene called clusterin. And, um, and, and when we do that, we increase the... Uh, percent of the cancer cells that are killed by the hormone therapy or chemotherapy. And in a recent uh, North American wide randomized phase two trial, we were able to show that adding OGX011 to taxotere chemotherapy prolongs survival by uh, uh, seven months, so from 16 to 23 months, which 
is, is a huge amount in that very advanced stage of cancer and has now led the drug to go into global phase three registration trials uh, uh, across Western Europe, North America, and Asia. And we should uh, uh, hear about those results sometime in 2012. So no matter where a man is on the continuum of prostate health or decline, there's a lot of hope right now. I think it's an incredibly exciting time to be in the field of cancer treatment and cancer research. I think we're making incredible strides and we'll continue to do so as long as, you know, uh, rational research and biology uh, guides the way. Well said, Dr. Glee. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you, Michelle. Pleasure being here. North of 49, a guide to the rest of your life.